2021 has definitely been a momentous year for Japan. The country has had to handle the pandemic, the Olympics, and then a change of prime minister. Mm -hmm. uh, can you share your high level insights on Japan's economy? Well, I am more convinced now that Japan is getting too cheap. Uh, I'm saying too cheap in a different way. Uh, oh, thank you. First uh, slide that I want to share with uh, you uh, today is how the Japanese market uh, has performed since the inception of Sparks, since I started this business uh, in Japan uh, with Sparks. Unfortunately, the uh, Japanese market over the past 32 years uh, declined by 26%. Whereas uh, US market up by 13 times, China nine times, 8.7 times, UK three times. If you look at Germany, Germany I think has uh, up by about six times. So Japan is the only country uh, that's been suffering from the uh, bubble burst uh, uh, syndromes. And it, it, it's, it, it took 30 years and still we have not fully cured yet. And this creates lots of uh, uh, distortions uh, in the uh, global markets. Uh, if you flip to the next page. Well, first thing that I observe, uh, particularly over the past couple of years after the COVID-19 broke out uh, is the uh, excess uh, in the US market. Uh, this can be explained by uh, many different things, but probably the most uh, uh, convincing reasons, let's say. In the US, I think so far, uh, this managed the COVID uh, consequences better than the other countries. As soon as that uh, shock started and knowing that about 10% of the GDP very quickly lost, uh, the government reacted very quickly to uh, make up that gap uh, by spending uh, uh, physical cap, physical money, physical uh, budget. Uh, Japan prepared about 60 trillion yen. Uh, that is a little more than 10%. Now, uh, they did it quite quickly to get the uh, supplementary budget. But after a year and a half later, Today, the budget has only spent half, 30 trillion, and 30 trillion is still kept in the safe. Thus, the uh, gap between the econo economy performance between the US and Japan is getting quite large. That market understood it and, and uh, in assigning the different uh, risk premium to different markets. US risk premium is much lower than Japan, thus the result is this. And result is not only the uh, stock market uh, in more toward the US, but it is for the yen too, if you look at the next page. Yen is now is at the level of 1970 in uh, all uh, uh, trade adjusted basis, real basis. So it is not only stock market getting cheaper, but it is Japan as a whole is getting too cheap is the way I look at it. I cannot say when and how that will uh, be corrected, but as an investor doing this for more than 30 years uh, in the market, uh, this type of uh, gap uh, cannot last long. Uh, it's, it's getting unsustainable. So uh, you who are participating in this uh, uh, call today, are, I assume that you are interested in different markets in the world. I'd like you to uh, closely uh, look at Japanese market today. So obviously uh, the government has to do something mm. with the change of prime minister, uh, the new prime minister Kishida. Hmm. He is focusing on a lot of reform plan. What's your take on uh, his term and his reform plan? 
Well, the biggest uh, agenda when they are uh, in the process of uh, selecting new prime minister is to do to build a new way to redistribute income uh, because they are uh, saying that uh, corporate Japan is making Japan, uh, making money yet that profit is not being properly distributed back to the consumers and that pressure I think is getting uh, uh, stronger and it it seems uh, compared with uh, previous uh, cabinet Suga cabinet uh, Kishida, Prime Minister Kishida, Kishida is uh, more decisive uh, and, and I will take a, a, a difficult actions. Uh, that I am hopeful. Uh, so corporate Japan corporations here are, are getting more pressure that they should redistribute redistrib back the profit to the uh, employees. That I think is happening. Uh, how quickly that would happen, I don't know. But there is a tremendous inflationary pressure is being already felt by individuals. Although companies here are a little more hesitant uh, to increase the consumer price yet. Well, as a matter of fact, I, this morning I was having this discussion with the uh, Yanai-san of Uniqlo. Uh, Yanai-san said that it is uh, imminent uh that corporation here uh he's not talking about himself but in general uh that they should uh, start thinking seriously uh to increase the uh, price so if that process happens i think japan will entering into a quite interesting time it's a major change uh that uh we'll uh, see for the first time over the past 30 years so I would like you to look at Japan with a different perspective. And that would probably mean inflation will be back in Japan finally. Well, I, I can't say uh, the inflation, inflation, but it may be more like a stagflation, but at least, at least price will be, uh, uh, will increase and people will feel it, which they have never felt it over the past 30 years. And that will change the mindset of this country. People start to realize how cheap the things are. It is that that is the case here. So investors might be most interested in opportunities. Based on your analysis and current state of the economy, what are some opportunities out there? Um, well, I'm interested in, well, when this whole uh, pandemic started about two years ago, I was uh, looking at the world and few things would happen. And first thing that came to my mind is the uh, physical discipline that's been uh, kept uh, quite strictly over the past two, three decades uh, will be eased. Uh, politicians had to spend more money uh, and spending their uh, physical budget. And that was the case. Uh, U.S. was leading uh, the way, and uh, you know all the developed countries is following that way. Uh, and history tells that it will eventually create the inflationary pressure, uh, and that's what I think will be also coming to the uh, Japanese countries, uh, Japan, and how people will react to it, we we'll still do not know. We don't know yet because it's been a first thing, uh, first major, major change that would happen in this country. Uh, and I don't know, when I was a student, inflation is always the issue. Uh, the word deflation is the dead word, you know, that I had to go to the library to find what the definition of deflation at that time. Now, the reverse thing is happening. Students have to go to the library to find what the meaning of uh, inflation. So I can say inflation, inflation will come to this country, but inflationary uh, trend of inflationary uh, trend, I think will be uh, confirmed and uh, more so for the coming years. Right. So in a previous dialogue with you, you also talked about how perhaps through these government uh, action, maybe there could be opportunities related to government improvement uh it could be infrastructure sector 
It could be uh, hardware or software technology putting to, together, or it could be about uh, price control based on inflationary pressure, if there is any. Uh, any particular sector of your interest or whatever that is driving you forward, what are you working on? Well, like the other countries in the world, uh, it is sure that the biggest issue here is the same as the others, like uh, weather, weather changes, uh, global warming is the theme, uh, how to convert our, uh, our uh, fuel coal-based uh, electricity generation to more renewable, uh, and so forth, and how that will be uh, encouraged uh by spending money i don't have i haven't seen clearly yet but as you may know japan uh introduced this uh uh fit feeding tariff for the renewable energy plan to be developed about eight years ago and over the past eight years we've been involved as an investor in this process a total uh uh, investment made uh, through this feeding tariff process is about 20 trillion. Uh, that is 200 billion dollars or 200 billion dollars. And the household is spending annually about 20 billion dollars. And I hope government will do so, uh, do similar measures to encourage the other source of uh, renewable energy like hydrogen and so forth. And I think something will be done for the coming uh, a few months. Obviously, oh. COP26 summit just ended and environmental is a big issue. But as you are at the forefront of pushing ESG and as well as the stewardship code, uh, what are the challenges that you see when talking to companies about improving environmental awareness and so forth? Is there any pushback? from Japanese corporates? Well, co corporate Japan and the management of those, uh, of the large corporations are, uh, should be, should be uh, agreeable with this trend. They cannot say no, but whether or not they will take a uh, uh, firm actions for that, it all depends on the company. Uh, it all depends on the company. Uh, but eventually, Japan as a whole will follow. Like uh, this COVID-19 uh, uh, period, Japan has been always uh, following the world. Huh? Our uh, vaccine started the latest. But as you see, once the system is set, this country can follow it quite quickly. Now the uh, vaccine diffu diffusions of this uh, country, Japan, is the highest among all the other uh, developed countries. So how this uh, new way uh, is set, I think is what we're trying to observe. Once something starts, it will start. Uh, I am very closely observing uh, the development of this uh, concept of hardware and software getting merged. Uh, it's a very interesting concept that I'm very uh, interested. Uh, but how and who will start this new wave? Uh, except some cases, I don't know yet, but it'll happen. Do you think all these changes will eventually improve ROE, return on equity? As investors, one of the biggest topic that we discuss is how Japanese corporates tend to have low ROE. Um, I, I just want to see how you are tackling the issue with low ROE in corporate Japan. Hmm. Uh, if you can uh, flip the page of the slide that uh, I uh, sent. Yeah. This one. Hmm. Uh, basically, this chart shows the trend of ROE of Japan and the US. Uh, it says there, uh, in 1998, Warren Buffett was asked whether or not he is interested in Japan. Uh, he said he was not interested because he is not interested uh, in the market that offers only 1% of ROE. That was in 1998. 
And today it increased to more than 8%. It's close to uh, 10%, as a matter of fact, before this COVID started. Uh, although I have to say that it's still lower uh, than that of US, but there is a strong uh, awareness among the corporate managers that keeping a uh, higher level of ROE is very important, not only for the investors, but also for them. Uh, I have one uh, uh, discussion with one of the largest uh, company CEO the other day. Uh, he's been my friend for many years. And uh, one of his, uh, well, few of his 100% uh, owned subsidiaries, which are all large companies, uh, he asked me adv advice, what sh he should, sh should he do? So I said, well, first, those subsidiaries that you own have too much, cap too much cash. So you should give them some discipline because they don't need this amount of cash because they are supported by you and doing the business together with you. And one year later, uh, he told me how those uh, company improved and uh, not only the cash position, but also the uh, ROE level. Our, our, our ROE of those subsidiaries were lower than the parent company before, but now it's all higher than the uh, parent company. And those companies are all very big companies. Uh, I learned from him and from these companies that once they decide, they can do it. And the initial process of improving return on capital in Japan, because their balance sheet is quite safe. Huh? And problem is not the uh, leverage over leverage, but problem is less leverage. Uh, there is a much room that they can improve uh, of their return on equity once and if they decide. And I think they have started in the process of deciding it. And with all these discussions, do you ask them simply to pay out as a form of dividend back to investor, or they should just redeploy for more innovative technologies or investments? What, what does this improvement in ROE usually lead to with your various dialogues with all these different chairmen of Japanese corporates? Well, typical case that uh, we advise when we get engaged, uh, this is one of the strategies that I myself uh, is getting involved uh, as a chef in the kitchen, you know, <laughs> is to redistribute it back to the shareholders. That's the simplest way. Uh, rather than predicting what business uh, should be uh, bailed out or should be uh, uh, decided, uh, should be closed or reopened a new thing, uh, which is a very hard decision to be made but to pay out the extra cash back to the shareholders uh, is simple that we can judge. And I am uh, surprised these days, more and more corporate managers, uh, CEOs, uh, willing to listen to me. So I think new trend uh, that creates and enhances uh, the partnership between corporate management and shareholders. I think it will start. I am very hopeful. And you think these dialogues have to go through proxy fights or, or you think a friendly gesture based on your network would do? Well, in, in our case, uh, we are also a listed company. I don't want to uh, fight against all those uh, companies. Uh, I have no time. I'm too old for that. But interesting thing is they enjoy speaking with me because in most of the case, I'm older than them. And most of the case, they know what I've been doing uh, in the market for many, many years. So they try to learn the experience as an investor in the market. So it's a very enjoyable, enjoyable process for both of us. And I receive more and more uh, uh, willingness that they want to change. You mentioned about your age, and this leads to another question that I have. 
yes. uh, aging population in Japan. Mm. Uh, what do you think the future look like for Japan with an aging population? And because of this, where do you see the country going in terms of investment opportunities, as well as uh, the way you look at the productivity of the Japanese? Well, this is what uh, Peter Drucker says, is uh, the future that has already happened. Aging and the population issue is the simplest future uh, prediction that we can do. Uh, so Japan cannot avoid it. So with this, so it's a uh, everyone's knowledge. And in normal case, that is discounted in the price. Okay. So with this, what would would happen and should happen to this country to overcome this? Uh, first. We have lots of population and those are very well skilled and trained and educated, which are housewives. Uh, that has not been fully encouraged and that infrastructure has not been fully installed. I think that trend will be uh, getting uh, strengthened. Government will encourage to support the uh, uh, housekeeping mothers or husbands that they have uh, more support so that they can go out and work uh, in a more efficient way. Number two, currently uh, the uh, retirement age is set at around 60 years old. And there are more and more companies is delaying that retirement age up to 65 to 70 years old. And that will smoothen this transition uh, for the coming five to 10 years. So it is not as serious as market thinks. The transition is uh, started. But biggest and ultimate solution, Ronald, is this DX trend. The new technology, I think, uh, need to be, need to be uh, better installed in this society. And there are lots of things can be uh, replaced by this technology uh, together with technology uh, is my view. So you don't need to be that pessimistic. And at the same time, this trend that Japan is now uh, experiencing is the trend for most of the uh, Asian countries. It will be the case for Korea it will be probably more serious case for China for the coming five, 10 years. Uh, so the way we go through this period will make a case for different uh, uh, countries in a developed area. I know that you have been working on a lot of uh, new investment ideas to provide solutions for Japan. Uh, can you share some concrete ideas? I know you have Mirai, Invest, uh, Mirai Fund, which does uh, a lot of uh, material science, uh, uh, robotics, AI, and so forth. Uh, any, any views on that and how Japan could lead the R&D and investment in this front? Well, I, I want to say and emphasize that Sparks is a very unique investment boutique. Uh, I started the company 32 years ago as a boutique to invest in small cap uh, companies in Japan because I thought that there are better growth opportunities in that category of the market. Because you should know, I started this company at the very peak of bubble. And it was very, very expensive, most of these uh, cases. But I found that the discount in the small uh, company area, which has a higher uh, growth prospect. And during that uh, process, uh, what I try to do is to really understand what is the investment uh, uh, skill uh, to be. And uh, I learned most of the basic technique and skill from a uh, US legends like Warren Buffett, Joy Soros, Peter Lynch, 
uh, Ben Graham, uh, Philip Fisher, and so forth. So I created like a small school here. You know, I, I was a professor and I taught these students. And now we have few layers. And it's been practicing this investment uh, basic skills. And applying this skill, we realized that we can do different uh, style of investments, like uh, uh, private equity kind of thing or venture capital. So as this skill is being built in internally, I start to look at where the new growth would be. Then I realized first, uh, well, when I traveled, everyone started to talk about AI and robotics. And I thought about it, what is AI and robotics would be applied in this country? And I realized that would be the area of automobile. So I talked about the idea, uh, talking to the uh, uh, Toyota Motor, and Toyota Motor as a company agreed that they will uh, participate in the idea as a fund uh, seed money provider. So I started this idea of investing in AI and robotics and so forth uh, together with strategic investors. And then I realized uh, Japan, because of this incident in uh, Tohoku tsunami, that we are uh, one of our nuclear uh, plants were damaged and it created a mess. So I realized that it is very important to have a renewable energy uh, source. And at that time, Japan government introduced the uh, uh, feed-in tariff, uh, FIT. And calculating a simple math, that <laughs> it's a huge return that can be made. So I explained that to the uh, potential investors and we start getting involved in that part of investments. Uh, so, our investment, although it looks like we are doing different things, but it's all boils down to this investment skill that I learned from Warren Buffett. Buying cheap with cash flow and potential growth. And so far, what we've developed and what we implemented has been proved to be quite efficient and quite uh, powerful. Uh, that we could uh, uh, survive through this uh, difficult 32 years in Japan. So uh, what is keeping you busy now, Dan? Uh, I know you have so many different uh, people working in the company and steering different products, but yourself, what is keeping you busy and, and what, what are you working on now? Hmm. Well, uh, Adam Smith, father of economics said, uh, happiness is enjoyment. So I tried to find what I can enjoy. And I realized that I'm a born analyst. So I went back to the kitchen where I can cook again. So about a year and a half ago, I started the fund again. Uh, myself that is concentrating on the good company. Good company defined as a company that can produce or render the high level service or products with brand. And I realized that not the stock price, but those products and services that is globally very, very proved to be high level is too cheap. I found that generally the things that you can buy here with the highest brand or quality is 30 to 40% cheaper than the rest of the world. And I realized as an investor, this cannot be continued. There will be a smart guys who will start arbitraging. So I took this idea and start implementing this idea as a fund. And also I realized that those companies need to understand their value better. So I start to get, uh, start to engaging, uh, start get engaged in these companies. And that's the story that I told you that those CEOs are very happy and enjoy uh, speaking with me. So this is one of the strategy that I would like to develop. This engagement based on the uh, governance. Uh, it's a very interesting area uh, with a very high quality product. 
And these are usually large caps that you are talking about, or you will start with small mid cap as well. Well, I don't want to limit uh, my investment uh, based on the size, but uh, it typically goes toward the one to three billion dollar market cap company. That means uh, they are established. And some of the company has a long history, but they have not realized fully the value that they can create. With your experience as an investor, what's your view of Japan 20 years, 30 years from now? Uh, how will the way finance or investing be if you have a crystal ball? <laughs> well, Ronald, first of all, I don't have a crystal ball. Two, even my own company to predict what would happen after five years is not an easy thing. But as Peter Drucker said, find the uh, future that has already happened. And as I said, the future that has already happened in this country is this uh, demographic things. Uh, Japan had to change. Uh, there is no doubt about it. And the future that has already happened this uh, pandemic. Pandemic created lots of uh, uh, changes in the society. If you talk about the Black Death uh, pandemic uh, in the 14th century in New York, uh, that killed uh, they said 50% of the entire population in Europe, and it created huge change. They lost the uh, faith in the uh, Christianity because praying for the God doesn't help them, didn't help them. They realized that there should be something uh, that they should look for. Then it's created a whole chain of reactions. Uh, after the uh, uh, World War I, there was a, a pandemic happened for uh, uh, Spanish flu. Uh, unfortunate history uh, started, you know, World War I and World War II. So I'm telling and asking myself every day what the consequence of this pandemic uh, will create for us. And I'm not necessarily uh, uh, optimistic. It can change lots of things, but I am an investor and I am proud of myself that we survived through this bubble burst uh, period. So no matter what, we know and I know that we'll get through and uh, we'll find the interesting way to survive, survive and uh, interesting way to invest in different environments. Now I know we are running out of time now. It's uh, 6.15 for you. It's dinner time for you now. Um, so thank you so much for joining this interview, and I wow. hope to sh have a dialogue with you again, and I hope the border opens sooner so I can come visit you. Yeah, thank you very much, Ronald, and everyone, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. Mm -hmm.